previous tutorial we saw how to perform a simulation. As we said, we anytime that we use the IC sim, there are two runs of the model. The first is performed according to the conditions of irrigation of nitrogen that we have considered. In the lower part of the file, we can see run number two, which is performed for yield potential, which means when no mm, limitations are uh, made on water or nitrogen. For instance, in this case, we have already changed the management conditions and applied six irrigations of 100 millimeters total of 600 millimeters and we have applied four, uh, four applications of urea with a total of 400 kilos of nitrogen per hectare. We perform the simulation, override the existing file and we see that in the overview with this conditions of irrigation and nitrogen applied, we can get 9.3 tons per hectare. This is very close to the yield potential. We go to run 2, the lower part of the file, and we see that the potential yield is 10.9 tons per hectare. So with these conditions we would be very close to the potential yield. We have more output files that we can have a look at. There is also a summary file which only records very specific variables for each run. For instance, this would be the simulation start date, the planting date, 1987, day of year 60, emergence date, day of year 69, thesis date, day of year 145, maturity date and harvest date. Remember that the harvest was performed at the time of physiological maturity. We have other variables, for instance, this would be the biomass of the shoot, total biomass, for the simulation would be 21.1, for the potential around 25 tons per hectare. And these are the yields, harvest 9.3 versus 10.9 for the potential. There are many other variables that are recorded in this summary file. For instance, total irrigation, maximum leaf area index, 3.6 for the simulation versus 4.7 for the potential. This is the harvest index, 0.44 for both simulations. Okay, there are also some files that are related to the variation of variables along the growing season. For instance, the soil water uh, content of the different layers is stored in the soil watt file. Here we see for different dates, uh, reported a day of year, the year, days after sowing, we have here the soil water content for the different layers of the soil along the growing season. We can also graph these specific files using this program. We click on the run we are interested and we can plot, for instance, the soil water content for the first five layers.
Here we have the layer 1, layer 2, layer 3, 4 and 5. This would be layer 1, which is the one changing more. Usually these big changes in soil water content are related to the application of irrigations. If you remember, we applied 6 irrigation each of 100 millimeters. Okay, we exit the graph program. We have other variables, for instance, the uh, plant growth shows some variables related to plant growth. Let's see graphically. We have for the Simulation and for yield potential, we can have a look, for instance, at the Leafery Index. The yellow line shows the Leafery Index of the potential uh, simulation, while the red one shows the Leafery Index throughout the growing season for the simulation according to the management that we have provided. We have many other variables that we can, uh, that we can plot. For instance, the root, den uh, root den uh, density. We remove the Leafari index. And let's have a look at the root density for the five first layers. This would be, the red one would be for layer, uh, layer one in the simulation. For the potential conditions, there, we, there would be a small variation. And for other layers, there is no uh, difference between the layers, between the two simulations. Let's see if we had some water stress. Uh, sorry, we better always remove what we have been already watching. Sorry, water stress photosynthesis, water stress for expansion, there was no water stress throughout the growing season. The top weight would be the total biomass for the simulation. You will see that the, the total biomass is close to the maximum and then the Simulation departs from the potential biomass production, which is the black line. We exit this one. We have more variables, for instance, related to inorganic nitrogen. You can also graph, for instance, the nitrate, nitrate concentration for the different layers. Sorry, we have to select one. You see that the nitrate concentration in the layer in the different layers changes quite a lot throughout the growing season because we are applying a lot of irrigation, which is probably causing some nitrogen leaching. We remove this. Let's see. Nitrogen leached. Okay. Sorry, we didn't remove the nitrate in the layer 
take number five. And this is the cumulative nitrogen leached. We have a lot of leaching during this period. And then we have leaching on a specific periods, probably related to the occurrence of irrigations at these dates. For instance, here, 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 or here. There are many other variables that we can plot. We exit the graph. So we see that we have output files that provide information for every day of the simulation, either for nitrogen, for water, or for plant growth. And then we have a specific files, like the overview file that we already saw, or this, the overview file, which is an overview of everything that happened during the simulation, or the summary file that selects only specific variables of the simulation. We have not discussed the environmental modifications, which allows adjusting different environmental variables. For instance, we can adjust the temperature by adding, subtracting, multiplying or replacing the values of the weather file. Let's consider that we want to increase the temperature by 2 degrees. We add 2 degrees to the maximum and 2 degrees to the minimum temperature. And then we perform the simulation. We go to the overview. If you remember, we were in 9.6 tons per hectare. And the yield has decreased to, low, to a value lower than 9 tons per hectare. The potential yield also has decreased from 10.5, from 10.5 to around 9 tons per hectare. This is due probably to a shortening of the growing season. So by using environmental modifications, we can change either day length, or the total radiation, temperatures, as we, as we have seen, I'm going to return to zero. We can change the precipitation. Let's consider that we replace the precipitation to zero. And we go to simulate. We go to the overview. And we have a look at the results of the model. We get 10.9 for the potential yield, as it is not limited, and 9.8 for the limited yield. Now, the precipitation during the growing season has been zero as we have replaced all the values of precipitation with a value of zero. We could also change the CO2 concentration just to mimic possible environmental changes or change the humidity or change the wind speed. In summary, with IC-SIM, we can perform very simply crop simulations using the crop models included in this app, 4.5, with the only limitation that we need to perform the simulations one at a time. We cannot perform a lot of simulations uh, at the same time.